Welcome to another episode of Invention Dimension. As you are learning, there are a few different steps in the invention process, and following them help inventors like you arrive at the best prototype to solve their problem. Today's episode is all about the design step in the invention process. When designing a prototype, an inventor thinks and works like an engineer and a designer. In case you're not sure what kind of work engineers and designers do, let me explain. Designers create visual concepts by hand or using computer software to communicate ideas that inspire and inform the viewer. For an inventor, it would be a drawing that lets people know how the prototype will look when it's built. Engineers produce specifications for the design, development, and manufacturing of something. They think about what materials or objects they will use to build the prototype, how big or small it will be, and the measurements or scale of the prototype. Engineers and designers both share what a prototype will look like through sketching and drawing. They think about how original their prototype design is compared to other inventions already in stores. There are lots of different ways to create a prototype design. You could use traditional drawing methods like pencil, ink, markers, or crayons on paper. Or an inventor might use computer drawing programs to create their designs. Today, we will talk with people who use the design step in their professions, like industrial designers, mechanical engineers, and other inventors. They will share advice, cool design methods, and concept drawings with us. Let's go see how design impacts invention and products in our world. Well, I think design all comes depends on the type of learner you are. And so if you're a visual learner, it's really good to be able to draw it out, to be able to explain it. If, you're, if you like things that are more physical, then grab your Legos and try to build what you're thinking with Legos. Um, we've just created a, a new elevator system and thought process, and we use Legos even today. So it's always a great way to be able to really help people visualize your design and to be able to give them that opportunity to see how it would work. Without the sketch, um, it's hard to get others to buy in. It's hard to get others to understand what the value of the, of the creative idea is. So we teach our students again and again and again about the importance of sketching. They must learn how to sketch. They must know how to sketch rapidly. They must know how to use that as a tool to communicate with others. Pieces of a good quality sketch include information that, they, that the designer can use to communicate their ideas to others, whether that be a manager or a client or a manufacturer. And those things include it needs to have a sense of scale. In other words, am I designing a toaster that's this big or a toaster that's that big? And so putting a piece of toast or a glass of orange juice into the sketch helps establish a sense of scale. The, the sketch also needs to have a sense of context. Is this toaster housed in a kitchen or is it housed in a camper? And those may have two different approaches to the design. We try to get our students to draw in three-dimensional views and perspective views because while designers are trained to look at orthographics front, top, and right side and, and make the cognitive leap to what that will look like as a three-dimensional object is a refined skill, but most of their audience doesn't have that ability, so by drawing in perspective, we give them a better sense and a better ability to understand the drawing. The drawing needs to have annotations that help us understand its features and functions. What will this toaster do? How do I interact with it? Where are the points of uh, interaction that make something else happen? It needs to have name, date, and concept number. Name and date are important to establish ownership to the designer. This is you know, about our intellectual property rights and, and assigning ownership to that creative idea. And then concept number helps me understand from a historical perspective, where did this concept come in the line of creations that we made for this project. We may get at some point in that design process where we go, you know, that that solution is good, but something's missing. We lost an element somewhere. We can go back in the his history of how those were created to find where we went wrong and, and correct those mistakes. Just the nature of how ideas come to me is just randomly and sporadically and I don't know where I'll be or which notebook I'll have with me and I have about six different notebooks I keep at once. Um, and some of them are sketchbooks and some of them are just for notes. Um, and then I also keep notes on my phone and on my laptop and so they're really just everywhere. But the fun part about that then is it kind of encourages encourages more divergent thinking on my part, so I start making connections between things that I didn't realize were connected otherwise, and it just really helps in 
coming up with innovative solutions. This is like my journal. I wrote about what things I did. I drew some models and then I came to the final one, which is this one. And I also wrote about some research I did. This is my uh, first invention, but I've had several designs, uh, five alone on paper before I even started building, and then I added uh, several improvements. The sketching and design process is a very important step when building a prototype, as it helps you see what your invention will look like. You'll know what you have, what size it has to be, what you have to add in there to make sure that everything looks just like your drawing. It really helps you understand how it needs to be created. And for example, like this was our, we originally uh, had just a random horrible drawing but then uh, now we added like the slip and trip uh, after we did the original base outline and this tells you the dimensions so, like it helps you map out what it's going to look like easier. I had like an, an image in my head what I wanted it to look like so we just went to the store bought some teddy bears some chairs put them together or like oh this is too big for little kids it's going to be too heavy. One of the things that, that we do at United Technologies is we do what's called biomimicry. And so we look at nature and we look to say, are there solutions that out there that are in nature that we can utilize? Whether it's the way in which water comes off a, um, a bird's wing and can we apply that to our heat exchangers and our air conditioning units. Being able to really explore how other how nature has solved problems is a fantastic way to help lead into your design thought process. Curiosity is what really drives us as designers. Why is it done this way? How is it done this way? As you're using something, ask yourself questions about it. Why is this done this way? Why did they pick this color? Why did they pick this material? Why is it done this way? Are there things that I would do differently? If you're really interested in that mechanical aspect and just trying to figure out how to make something better, then this is the field to be in. It's an exciting, engaging field. And not only that, but you get to travel the world, you get to learn different cultures, you get to just, you know, and you're solving someone else's problem. Remember, inventors use STEAM skills, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Drawing and creating is fun work. Make sure you use the creative power within you and activate it. You'll be a better inventor when you really design and draw out your prototype.